Hey traders, welcome back and good morning. We are starting a brand new week. This is uh, March the 6th of 2023. And this is our weekly market analyses and past week's performance review of our live trading room. Let's jump right into it. It has been uh, an interesting week this past week, uh, sort of switching from a bearish to neutral to now bullish uh, outlook. Really, if you pull back a little bit here and look at the weekly technicals, which we look at here in this video review, still some sell signals coming in on a couple of the moving averages and a couple of neutral ratings on some of our technicals, but we are moving back to the buy mode right now. So it'll be interesting to see uh, if we can now build momentum with that. Uh, it's been a couple of weeks of trying to move from this bearish to bullish stance. And I, I do think that today, coming off of a what was a pretty strong Friday, I think today will be a telling day. We look at some of the key support resistance areas and on a uh, daily chart, some of the bigger numbers that I am looking at, uh, just for your notes right here. Again, this is on, on, a, on a bigger picture here. Support levels would be, uh, and again, this is the E-minis that we're looking at, the futures contract. 39.83 would be a point of control. And, and so that's an important area right in here. Uh, VWAP down, is down here. VWAP would be right around 39.21. And then just down below that is that 39.40 level. That's the, that's the cliff uh, that I always refer to that has been a big stopping point for this market for quite a while. So those would be some of the major uh, support areas on the downside. Resistance on the upside would be uh, 4094, 4144, and 4186. So that's the bigger picture as we look for this week to play out. We'll look at uh, uh, expected moves in the marketplace this week. Not a big difference this week versus last week. We pull into the two-hour candles, which is what we use on a daily basis to sort of set our support and resistance levels. And I'll give you some of our numbers for what we're going to be using in our live trading room here today. On the support side, uh, 4030. And then down to 4010. And then a big one, 39.98. That's, that's, that's been a big level uh, as of late. 39.75, that's a big level as well. Uh, when we break this, we've usually been able to hold this. Uh, and then down below that would be 39.53 and 39.25. So those are the levels of support that we're looking at for a downside move today. On the resistance or the upside, uh, we're looking at 4063, 4089, 4104. That's a very big level right there, 4104. Uh, 4137. Uh, and then last but not least, 40. 166. So those would be our intraday levels that we're looking at as we kick off the market today. Uh, we look at sort of the key support resistance areas on all of the major indices. And I think the big sort of tell to look at right now is that we are holding those 200 day moving averages on all of the indices. And, and again, we've talked about this. 200 day moving average is a very big demarcation. It's a huge, huge line in the sand for the marketplace. We look at year to date performance. It's been uh, all over the map. We had a very, very strong January. 
uh, most of February was flat, and then we've sort of sold off into March. And then, of course, Thursday and Friday of last week, we had some pretty strong performances. But uh, the S&P right now up about 6%. Yeah, just to, to let you know, that compares to about 10% return in our uh, asset allocation model, our asymmetric trade management program. Pretty proud of that. We'll get into performance in just a moment here. We look at the sector performance for the week, and it is still energy that is pushing along with materials. Uh, as most of you know, we do a weekly ladder trade in oil which obviously is in the energy sector. And we've been chasing this up a little bit here, uh, getting a little bit of a retracement here this morning. So hopefully we'll see if that can hold. But that's where the activity <clears throat> is in the marketplace right now. We look at week to week. This is two weeks ago versus last week. And you can see it is a dramatic shift as we move from bearish to bullish. Pretty much across the board, we had bullish action uh, over this last week. And again, just see if that can continue this week. Uh, again, you couldn't have much of a difference two weeks ago versus last week. And uh, one of the things I think that you know more than anything, it's a fair amount of volatility going on there. Uh, and again, it's sort of nice to have something like our asymmetric trade management program that is uh, a little smoother. It sort of smooths out the, the these volatility sort of periods that we're in. Uh, I would imagine that this is going to calm down here if the bulls can continue to take charge here and get some directional bias. We've had several weeks where we just haven't had that directional bias, sort of a vacuum. And the market abhors a vacuum. It hates neutral ratings and it seeks uh, directional uh, sort of bias in terms of its movements. And so we'll see what the bulls can do if they can, in fact, build off of last week's numbers. We look at the put call ratio, and it's interesting that even though over these last two weeks, the market has done a whole lot of hard work to get from a bearish to a neutral to now a bullish stance, that our put call ratios are still flashing bearish. Now, they're not horribly bearish. They're just barely below one. So it's nothing, I think, major, but across the board, we're still bearish on the put call ratios. We look at the expected moves for the week. We had a full week last week. We had a full week this week. Not much difference. Again, we've been really, really spoiled uh, with, you know, 110 to 140 point expected moves. Uh, heavens knows we certainly had a bigger move last week than 76 points. And uh, I would not be surprised with uh, a couple with with Powell speaking twice this week. I would not be surprised if we have a bigger than 78 point move this week. That makes it tough for option sellers uh, that because that essentially means that you are selling option premium that is underpriced. So we'll have to see how that goes this week and what the price movement looks like. We look at the fear greed sentiment reading and it's pretty much darn near neutral, not giving us much uh, of any type of directional bias there. Again, that's usually reflective of what we're getting right now where we've sort of switched from a bearish and we're now moving into a bullish and we're just kind of sitting there in no man's land. So not a lot of reading there. S&P volume hasn't really changed that much. We're not seeing any spikes or any drops in volume. We do have a lot of news items coming out this week. We've got factory orders coming out this morning. Uh, tomorrow on Tuesday, we do have a, 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 a Powell speaking that could potentially move the market. Uh, Wednesday is going to be a busy day for us. We've got the Eurozone GDP, the revised GDP number coming out. I wouldn't expect that the revised number is going to be that much different. So that's probably, in my opinion, not going to be a big catalyst. Uh, but we do have the ADP employment change number in the U.S. coming out. And Powell speaks once again. And then, of course, we have oil inventory numbers come out. That's always important for us because we do trade an oil ladder trade every single week. And then later in the evening on Wednesday, the Chinese PPI number is going to come out. Um, that shouldn't affect us during the cash markets, but it will potentially affect our overnight theta ferry trade. And so on Wednesday, we may wait a, a little bit into the evening to kind of see 
what that does, if anything, to the U.S. futures market. Thursday's a big day. We've got jobless claims. That does usually give a little bit of uh, volatility into the market, at, at least for a, a temporary 20 to 40 minute period, if nothing else. Nat gas numbers are out. We are well, I am chomping at the bit to get back into our nat gas trade. And we are finally into an expiration window where it's starting to make sense. So we may on Thursday be looking at a new nat gas trade. Uh, Fed member Barr speaks and we have Japanese PPI number over the evening as well. That comes out in the evening. So again, as the um, Asian markets open up, that could potentially move the market as well. And so again, that's something just for us to be aware of as we place our Theta Ferry trade, our overnight Theta Ferry trade. Uh, Friday, we have unemployment rate coming out and non-farm payrolls. Non-farm payrolls is usually a market mover. So we've got some things to move the market this week. Um, I, I was pretty darn pleased, pretty darn happy with how well we were able to do with our trading last week, given uh, the erratic nature of the marketplace. I think we might be getting the same sort of erratic moves this week. So we'll just have to see. Uh, and maybe that necessitates taking profits uh, earlier, taking lower percentage returns on booking our profits uh, and just playing it a little bit closer to our best. We'll have to see how that plays out. But there's enough news items that it, it, it is going to, I think, affect us. We look at our results up to date from last week and our zero DTEs, uh, the one thing, that the erratic moves have given us over this last week that has just been absolutely phenomenal uh, is we have had 44 days of zero DTE opportunities and we've done 64 trades. Now, generally speaking, we're only looking to get one zero DTE in on a day. Uh, those are day trades, but we've just, we've had a really, really nice opportunity of um, a lot of volatility still coming in later in the day and a little bit above what I would consider above average premium in the NDX. And so we've been able to uh, book profits coming out of our SPX trade and get into another iteration of a zero DT with the NDX later in the day. 62 winners, two losers, 97% win, win rate. Uh, I don't think you're going to find more impressive numbers out there if you are interested in zero DTE trading. Um, uh, just saw uh, some results from uh, another very prominent trading room that they put up on their YouTube channel uh, almost over a one year period of time uh, and they were up about 52% over a year. Um, our most conservative trade that we do in here, a trade that has never ever lost money for us ever in our trading room, the IWM Millionaire Maker trade, that, that's what that trade returned for us. So if you really are interested in zero DTs, I don't know that you're gonna do better. I really don't. Come check out what we're doing. I think you'll be impressed. Um, our 40 TE trades started off the year with our 40 TE uh, trades. They were tough. Um, uh, we've had some really good success, 22 wins and, and one loss, but they've been really tough. And to be very frank, some of our earnings on a weekly basis have been very subpar to what we're used to two, three, four percent returns on a weekly basis where we're shooting for 10 percent. Well, the, the last two weeks have been just phenomenal. Um, absolutely phenomenal. Uh, both of our 4 DTE trades, the SPY and the Q, both over the last two weeks have surpassed our 10 percent income goal for the week. So very, very happy with those. Uh, and, and hopefully we can continue that trend here this week. We will be reinitiating those trades once again here in our trading room today, which is what we generally do on a Monday. Uh, in addition to that, we have the IWM Millionaire Maker trade, nine total trading opportunities with that trade. We've done 13 of them. All 13 have been winners. Um, this is the trade that we have never had a loss, in, knock on wood, in our trading room. We will. We will at some point. That's just the way it works. Uh, but it has been a tremendously consistent trade. Uh, and this is a trade that uh, has that came in last year, again, at about 50% ROI. 
is what we call it the millionaire maker trade. Uh, pairs trades, uh, no additions this past week. We still have nine total trades that we've done. Seven of them have been booked and closed out as winners. We still have two working and we're still working those two trades. Like to get those uh, uh, booked as a profit and move on. Uh, we do have uh, one more that we are adding this week that was a recommendation by one of our trading members. So I'm pretty excited to get that deployed this week. Bear market trades, uh, we added a bear market trade this past week. We were able to book a profit on that. So seven winners, no losers there. Um, our stock millionaire maker, which is just a different version of the IWM millionaire maker, only we use equities instead of an index. Uh, we're right now using uh, Netflix and we're using PayPal. And we've done 14 of those trades this year. All 14 of those have been winners. These are interesting. On our Millionaire Maker, uh, we're shooting for about 1% a week. That's kind of our goal there, income-wise. Again, that's where you get to about 50% a year on a trade that has never lost money for us. On the Stock uh, Millionaire Maker trade, uh, we're looking for anywhere between 3 and 6% a week. So... A lot more volatile. I would expect that we will have some losers here as we go forward this year. It's the nature of a trade that has the potential to make 300 to 600% more than something that doesn't have losses. But it is part of our diversification strategy and it's been an awesome trade so far this year. Not a single loser in there. Positive Vega DIA ladders. Uh, we added uh, another ladder this past week. We've had nine of those this, this year. All nine of them are either in the profit zone and making money or have been closed out. So our ladder trades uh, have been just phenomenal for us. Ladder trades are so flexible in nature. Every Tuesday and Thursday, we have a live Zoom feed where we scalp the e-minis. And uh, this was a good week for us. I brought in $810 profit on Tuesday and about $1,400 profit on Thursday. So scalping is always a nice little sort of icing on the cake. It's a great way to uh, give us the potential to get to our weekly income goals, which is about 5%. We're trying to net about 1% a day. We never have, we never will net 1% a day. You either do better or worse. Uh, but over a week's period of time, we'd like to see about 5% income potential on the trades that we book. And scalping certainly helps that number by quite a bit. Uh, Dragonflies, uh, we added a Boeing trade back into the mix. And so far, so good on that iteration. That puts us at four total trades. We do still have one of these open and working, but it's in the profit zone right now. And uh, of course, we will update that as we get to expiration. Our Theta Ferry trades, uh, boy, this has been a popular trade. Uh, starting to see some imitators and some individuals popping up on YouTube, uh, borrowing some of our strategies, which I guess imitation is a great form of flattery, but it's been an awesome trade for us. I think if you can go to a trading room and they say, hey, look, we're going to start you off with a strategy that has, no guarantees, but has in the past put an extra $20,000 a year in our members' pockets uh, overnight. $100 a day, about $1,600 a month is what we've been averaging on this trade. Uh, most people would be excited about that. You know, it's not the end all be all, but an extra 20 grand is a good way to start uh, your, your, your trading year off. And the Theta Ferry has just been fantastic for us. It's just been absolutely fantastic. Uh, I'm looking at our Theta Ferry right now that we put on on Sunday evening. Just see where we're at on that. Very, very close. I'm sitting at a $73 profit. We take a, an automatic book profit at $100. So I'm hopeful to get out of that here uh, in the next hour or so before the cash markets open up. Our gold ladders, uh, our gold ladders have been fantastic. We have never, ever taken a loss in our gold ladders, but we've also not taken any of our ladders all the way to expiration. So this looks awesome, and it is. It's fantastic. Again, the gold ladder is so flexible that we can mold and shape it around the ebbs and flows and the ups and downs of something like gold. 
but our returns have been subpar on this. Uh, we are shooting for one and a half percent a week or about 6% uh, a month or about 70% a year. And we're below the one and a half percent a week right now uh, because we have not been able to take any of these ladders all the way to expiration. So we're making money, it's bringing profits in, it's been doing it very consistently, but we'd like to get some of these ladders all the way to expiration. That would certainly help us uh, in our overall ROI. Overnight vampire trades, uh, nothing new there. We've done two, to two total trades. One was a winner, one was a loser. Oil ladder, uh, we added to the oil ladder last week. And uh, again, uh, the ladder trades have just been fantastic for us. Of all the ladder trades, oil has the highest ROI potential. So it's also the most volatile. That yeah, makes sense. Uh, and oil, of course, has been pushing quite a bit as of late. So we've been chasing this trade a little bit. But uh, again, uh, no losers on the year with this trade. And uh, uh, this is a trade that is uh, probably, again, pushing somewhere close to 6 to 10% return potential per week. So it's been awesome for us. Uh, the in the money cover trade, we are up to four of these trades now. Uh, two of them have gone through all of the steps, meaning we sold a call or a put, we got assigned the equity, we're cash flowing it with the in the money cover. Two of them are still in stage one, which is where we've just sold the call or the put. We haven't got assigned yet, but that's been an absolute awesome trade for us. And uh, that is quickly becoming one of the more popular trades in the trading room. Uh, broken wing butterflies, uh, we um, uh, moved out of that trade for an earnings period. We'll be coming back into that trade this week and we'll be continuing those. Um, our short portfolio, very interesting. Actually up to, I keep adding to this, I'm actually up to probably close to $2,400 of buying power now committed to this trade. Uh, and we're actually up to, oh, probably close to an 11% ROI on that so far. And we've only been in this, this portfolio, this little tiny model short portfolio for a very short period of time, no pun intended. Uh, so it's been a great trade for us and it's a great place if you don't have a lot of buying power. Uh, building that in my son's, my teenage son's accounts, where we're getting that from. Our, our XSP fly portfolio has been a lot of fun and we were able to book another profit on another one of these flies last week. Each one of these flies cost us about $10. So we've spent about $70 so far buying about seven of these butterflies. And uh, of the seven, two have landed in the profit zone and brought in $85 profit. So it's been a fun little experiment. Uh, there are a lot of trading rooms out there that uh, trade the zero DTE strategy uh, with butterflies. Of course, there's no real profit potential in that. Um, but we do it in a way that it is also fun, but we're not trying to make a living off of it like some of these zero DTE rooms are. Our asymmetric trading method, our investing portfolio, passive, five minutes a day, uh, it crushed the market in 2021 when the market was doing amazing. It crushed the market in 2022 when the market was doing horrible. And we are crushing the market now uh, this year so far very, very early in the year. But I will say this, if you have a uh, retirement account, if you have an investing account, if you have something that is not trading, but is more safety oriented, and you have not taken a look at the ATM program, you really owe it to yourself. It has just been, well, look, the results speak for themselves, right? They speak for themselves. So if you do wanna come check out what we're doing and trade live with us, you can go to try zero DTE for free.com. You can come in, chat with all of our trading members, ask them what they're, don't take my word for it, ask our trading members whether or not they think this is the most amazing trading room out there. I, I, I think you'll be impressed with what we're doing. So come trade with us for free for a week if you'd like to check that out. If you do sign up as a member, we have a two times your money back guarantee, double your money back. If you follow all of the training steps, if you go through the individual training that you and I will do on a Zoom feed one-on-one, -on -one, 
and you don't believe this is the most value-oriented trading room online today uh, that is giving you trading ideas that that no one else has and no one else is doing I'll give you twice your money back so there's really no risk in coming to trade with us if you do want to look at more of the investment portfolio aspect uh, you can go to tryastforfree.com that's more of our passive investing approach just takes five minutes a day and if you want to come scalp with us on Tuesdays and Thursdays you can go to tryscalpingnow.com love to have you in either of those rooms and again thank you guys so much for uh, being a part of the program or coming to check out our program or just touching base with me from time to time on either my Twitter feed or here on the YouTube channel let me know what you're trading where you're finding success uh, love building a trading community so I'm appreciative of all you guys hope you have a really good trading week and we will see you guys very very soon here in the trading